Special thank you to Seed and Stone Cidery and Lucky Buzz Meadery for sponsoring the show today. Uh, they help to make this show possible and supply us with the, the occasional beverage when we're out there. They've got 10 uh, taps full of meads and ciders made right there in house. They've also got all sorts of awesome events going on, including an open mic. Uh, almost every single Thursday where you can come out and show your musical talent. So all you songwriters out there, uh, stop out and grab a cider or a mead and tell them that the songwriters couch and the Patrick Joan band sent you. Again, Seen and Stolen Cidery right here in Rochester, New York. Go out and visit them and let them know we sent you. Thanks, guys. Welcome to episode number 22 of the Songwriter's Couch. Uh, On the show today, I've got a little bit of a different uh, guest, as we tend to do from time to time, uh, who is not necessarily a songwriter, although she may. She may be at at some point. We'll find out whether or not she writes uh, songs as well as comedy. Uh, But before we get started here, I just want to uh, tell everyone to go down to the subscribe button, the link or the like button. Hit those things, subscribe, share them with your friends, comment, etc., etc. Helps with the algorithms and helps to spread the word about these amazing songwriters and or comedians that may be on the show uh, here today. (laughs) Um, And uh, helps spread the word about them and us. Uh, So if you like what you see, please help us out by doing that and of course thank you to seed and stone cider we'll be talking about a little bit of what we're drinking here in a second um from them but they're the reason why we can continue to do this because they help to pay for things so uh, on the show today i've got kai von doom kai welcome to the show Thank you for having me. If you want to bring it just a little bit further down in front of you to the microphone, because it's pretty directional. Yeah, and you can you can play with it, too. It doesn't get too crazy. So, Kai, introduce yourself to the lovely folks at home there. What do you do? Um, where can people find you online and in person, I would assume? Uh, and what do you want them to know? So, if you want to tell them right there. All right. So, I'm Kai Von Doom. I am a stand-up comedian. I have a few shows coming up, but the one I want you guys to go to is February 23rd. I'll be at Babeville in Buffalo, New York. So that's going to be a good time. Bunch of awesome comedians on that lineup. I've been doing stand-up for six years now, almost. Oh, wow. what, what's the name of the place? Ba- babe- Babeville. Babeville. Huh. Yeah, it sounds like a yeah, sex it sounds, shop. It sounds but like it's... it could be a strip club or something, but it's not. But <laughs> no. it's not. I have heard a lot of comedians back in the day used to start out like they used to have comedy shows at like strip clubs for some reason. But I don't, I don't know how that could possibly work out Honestly. well. I mean, maybe you just get used to like bombing all the time, so you get no, super comfortable. But yeah maybe i guess i guess so. i don't i don't frequent strip clubs that often but to, to see comedians there but welcome to the show kai yeah thanks for having is me. there like an instagram or something they can find you at too like what's your uh your handles yeah so i'm on facebook at kai von doom comedy kai k-a-i and von doom is spelled like dr doom v-o-n oh, i like the it. word doom i like it um and we are the songwriters couch of course but we have uh comedians on from time to time i think the last comedian we had was chris cardwell um who you know i believe yep. um who runs an open mic here and you've done that open mic and we we're kind of talking about that because because ali and i uh went there and we we're talking about the stage setup um and things around there like what do you prefer if you're going to play at a venue you're going to i'm saying play but if you're going to perform at a venue um like what's your favorite type of venue to perform at comedy wise it's interesting because we were just talking about strip clubs and actually oh is that it (laughs) no i haven't done that yet but the first time i ever did stand up like a paid show it was in front of like these male strippers i didn't know what was going to be happening a friend of mine was like oh i'm on this show i convinced them to let me bring you and i just said yes it's stage time of course i'm gonna go yeah and halfway through she's like oh it's in this like can i curse yeah, yeah, and of I, course. It's in like this bumfuck town in New York. <laughs> and, like, There's lots of those in upstate yeah, New York. Yeah. I'd never even been there. I had no cell phone signal in the whole town. Huh. 
I didn't know what the show was, but it was like five or six of us comedians and then strippers afterwards. Uh, Five or six. So it was like a whole showcase and then like a male review. Yep. type of thing oh, that's that sounds the like worst strippers i've ever seen in my life they was, <laughs> they looked like they worked maybe, at t-mobile yeah maybe they needed <laughs> <laughs> so what uh what was that like i mean was that was it mostly i'm guessing girls in the audience yeah there for the strip show or or was it more there were more people waiting for the comedy than there were the the t-mobile uh the strippers <laughs> <laughs> so the comedy was first I was the fifth out of six comedians to go Oh, up. so you were later in the... Yeah. And they hated all five before me. Oh, wow. They got zero laughs. And I'm like the new kid. I hadn't really done anything but open mics. And I'm just thinking, well, this is not going to go well for me. <laughs> These people hate me. <laughs> right. So there's like, it's all women, all older women in the crowd. I'm looking out. I asked this table in front of me. They're just like doing shots of tequila openly during my set. <laughs> like, whoo shots just yeah. like screaming was it like was, a bachelor bachelor bachelorette party oh or whatever, these or were not bachelorettes no. maybe 50 oh, years ago <laughs> <laughs> so i asked them i said you guys do a shot you're not gonna give me one so i did a shot with them oh, nice. and i was like what's going on here why don't you guys like anyone and they go oh we we want the men <laughs> and i thought they just meant male comedians yeah, and i was like yeah. wow that's sexist yeah but after the final comic Oh, all, all these dudes sudden, just come out. They're taking their clothes off. They're taking their, their pink polo shirts off. <laughs> pink polo shirts, yeah. Is that was, why? You, that's why you referenced the T-Mobile thing. Uh, the yeah, polo. I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't know going in that it was there was going to be that after the no, fact. No, uh, was, it was like a dinner. Yeah, that's it was set up like a dinner theater. Like everyone's ordering food. There's this huge stage. I knew there was going to be some type of show. I, I didn't know you, what it was. I could throw you off a little bit. I, yeah. I would assume that if I had a, a male review after one of my shows that just <laughs> kind of came up on stage i would be i would be surprised but yeah. yeah maybe we can blend maybe i'll do the next show i do i'll do it in in uh, my skivvies yeah no 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 one wants to see that uh but kai before we before we get deep into the weeds of comedy and the art of comedy and how it may re- may or may not relate to songwriting and music um we've been doing this bit at the beginning of the show okay. where we have our guests um deliver unto me two of their truths right two yeah two and one lie and then uh both ali and i try and figure out He's usually like she's yeah <laughs> usually she's right i usually get them wrong but but so why don't we why don't we play that game we should have some sort of theme music that comes in here too maybe write that down and we'll we'll do it i know we'll never do it because we're we're lazy in, in terms of production but but maybe eventually we'll have a little theme song that comes before. It. All right. So what do you got for All me, right. Kai? They say Libras are good liars, so I should <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe. I could. What is Lib? Where is Libra? What what months is that? September and October. September, October. Okay. So and so you're just after. I'm a Virgo, so like right before that. So you guys are supposed to be like fiery, like a little. We're like fiery. Fiery little liars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say. I'd say I'm personally fiery. All right. Most of the Libras I <laughs> know are, though. Little, yeah, I always little. get along with Libras. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So what do you got? Okay. So I had two truths and a lie. Are you lying about that? Maybe. About your birthday? Oh. <laughs> that's, not, oh. that's not in my two... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So <laughs> You can't overall lie about everything and then, and then trick me like that. Although... <laughs> okay. So my two truths are in a lie are, I saw Bob Dylan live in concert. Hmm. I was born in Georgetown, South Carolina, and I was born on the same exact date, so year and everything, as the actor Barry Keoghan. Hmm. I don't know who Barry Keoghan is. Have you seen Saltburn? Oh, yes. Is that the guy that drank the bath water? Yeah. I said that at, I said that at, I think it was at an open mic. I started talking about, do you know the guy, the movie where the guy drinks the bath water and no one had any idea what I was talking about? <laughs> they thought I was out of my mind. Um, okay, so he's the, he's the guy who falls in love with the other guy, right? Yep. And I'm terrible with names, so I don't even know what the character's names are. All right, so same exact birthday. That sounds pretty specific. You said where in South Carolina? Georgetown. I don't know South Carolina very well either. You were born there? Yes. That was the first one? And the first one was? I've seen Bob Dylan live in concert. Live. He's still alive. I should know that. <laughs> Bob Dylan's still alive, right? I'm going to say Bob Dylan only because my dad and I have a joke that... He, I'm like, hey, Bob Dylan's not dead yet. 
Well, that's what I just said. <laughs> you can't hear my whispering over there, but that's what I just said. Is he still alive, right? Um, when, so how, how old were you when you saw Bob Dylan? If I can, can I ask follow-up questions? Yeah, you can ask follow-up questions. I was 28 or 29, I think. Huh. What are you going with? You going with the Bob Dylan? I'm going to probably go with George, the Georgetown thing, just because I feel like it's such a mundane thing. You're trying to get one over on me by making it mundane, and then the other ones are detailed. But every time I've, every time I've been, I've been wrong uh, with it. All right, can I get a, a drum roll? All right. That wasn't very good, Ellie. <laughs> Doesn't work when you do it on on leg warmers. All right. So what's the lie? So the lie is I... that I was born in Georgetown, South oh, Carolina. One. I got one. I'm um, one for four. Uh, one for four, Kai. Um, so you were you got to see Bob Dylan perform. Where where did you yes. see him perform? Um, it was in Ithaca at the college. At Ithaca oh, really? College. Yep. Is, did you go to college out there? No. In Ithaca, I lived there for a year in Ithaca. Um, it's a gorgeous town. Com- Commons Apartments, or I forget what the name of the apartment. It was a really cool apartment. I had just moved up from uh, from Queens, so I was living in. Um, Queens, like right across the street from Queensbridge Projects, and so went to go look. My my ex wife now went to go look at apartments, and we found this two floor apartment. With these giant windows. Um, it's like seven hundred dollars a month or something ridiculously cheap. And I was like, we can get this for seven hundred because I growing up in New York, it's like you don't expect things to be affordable in any way, shape, or yeah. form. <laughs> um, but uh, it was kind of cool because when we went there, it's kind of foggy, so like the fog like sits in the in the valley or whatever between all those things look like Jurassic Park uh, throughout the whole thing. So um, was he good or was he so, Bob Dylan? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I, he was, he was Bob Dylan. I've never been like a huge fan of his. Yeah. A friend of mine like surprised me with tickets. He bought us like front row tickets to see Bob Dylan. I was like, Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> it's not, not really your thing. I mean, he's a legend. So you yeah, gotta kind of be go. like, yeah, you gotta go. I, I'm not a, I mean, I like, you know a lot of Bob Dylan's songs, and he's a great songwriter. Um, and I think for for that, um, I like him, and I have a lot of respect for his kind of songwriting abilities. Because to write stories, especially the way that he writes, is very like visual story writing uh, in songs, and that's actually very difficult to do. Have you ever, have you ever written a song yourself? No, you I haven't. Instruments or anything? No, I have no musical because talent. Because once in a while you pick up or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> no musical talent. What about in your family? Does anyone play? play any music no, no I, I do not come from a musical family All right, comedians in your family no i'm the, first, the only one the yeah. first of the generations to come of of a long line of comedians stand-up comedians <laughs> i don't know i think i'd be kind of upset if someone else does it <laughs> <laughs> Would you? you'd be you'd be like no i'm, I'm the one that's gonna uh, get it done or i'm like the second youngest of all of my cousins and everything so if one of them does it it's like okay you waited all this time yeah well, you what, had no interest in comedy. Now what you got do you it? into it? Then, if you were, if no one in your family was doing it, was it just kind of out of the blue, or what? What so, spurred on your comedic journey? So everyone's always watched comedy. Like my parents would be watching all the Def Jam comedy specials, and I'd be around the corner hiding, listening because I know yeah. I'm not supposed to be watching it. <laughs> and um, I've always been super into horror movies. It's gonna connect. I know. It's yeah. like, but I've always been super into horror movies ever since I was a small child. Having that like late October birthday, I always would watch like when the horror movies come out. I'm like, oh, this is like, it's for me. It's for yeah. my birthday. So I'd watch it way too young. I watched Nightmare on Elm Street as a small child. It used to give me <laughs> horrific nightmares. Yeah, I think and my real. mom would just say, oh, just watch something funny. So I'd watch Seinfeld and that was the first time I'd ever seen like a stand up comedian. I'm like, oh, he's just like standing there telling jokes. That's like his job. That's really cool. I want to do that one day. I didn't didn't think it was like an option until I actually started doing it. Yeah. So that was the first time you kind of thought about it as like doing it uh, as a career. Do you find, do you like, a a lot of comedians don't like, like they, they have respect for Jerry Seinfeld, but they don't like his comedy. Like they find it like boring. I've heard a few, a few comics like, eh. I kind of feel it. Translated from like the show the way he does it, but maybe it's because it's 
like old school comedy. Yeah. So you know what I mean. So well, he does funny. clean. It's all clean to comedy, so he doesn't he doesn't like curse or whatever. But I don't know. I find it like bland and. It know. is pretty. The bland. show was funnier. I feel like than his actual <laughs> stand up comedy. But uh, like from a technical st- sense, did you? Have you ever like studied what he did or any comedians in particular that like got you um, some technical knowledge from like studying what they're, you know, they're doing with bits and all that? I feel like I've kind of been working backwards with that because I the act of me myself doing stand up, I stumbled into it. Hmm. Like I thought I was at I thought I was signing up for a karaoke night. I didn't know we had open mics in Rochester. So, for you, can comedy. S- so you can sing a little bit then at least. Just got some a certain yeah, I'm gonna get it out of your car in a second here. <laughs> <laughs> so you went thinking you were gonna sing, what were you gonna sing? Celine Dion's uh what's the name of that thing from Titanic? That's uh <laughs> <laughs> what was the song you were going to sing it? At? I've actually never seen Titanic. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to go see it. It's, it's not worth I was going to sing No One Knows by Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. And then what, so what did you end up doing if you were going to get up there and do music? Well, once I realized it was an open mic, like a comedy open mic, I, I was like, I don't have any jokes. I've never yeah. written anything. So I just got up there and told stories. Huh. And did it? Did you feel like you got some laughs out of it, or oh, some? I did. I did really yeah. well. I did too well. Oh, that's a- <laughs> <laughs> it. Was too long before I bombed for the first time. You're oh, supposed really? to get up there and bomb immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you actually ended up getting some laughs. Did you? Did you then say after that original open mic, like, oh, I'm gonna now go out and start writing a set, or was it kind of you just started going to open mics more often, or like, what was your process of becoming like? actually writing a set you know what i mean and going out and performing yeah so it takes a long time to get a five minute set doing comedy you have to go you have to put in countless hours at open mics a lot of the comics in the scene today i think are trying to like get that instant gratification of Mm. they go to their first open mic and they're like i need a five minute set right now me i would just go to the mics and fuck around until i just happened upon five minutes and i think that's what you're supposed to do yeah i think that um with comedy it's it's tough too because a lot of comics i've i've heard in interviews say they have to really have to work stuff out on stage but that takes a little bit of that takes some some courage to get up there and just fuck around (laughs) like what were you did you have did you have any stage fright in the beginning, like at all, or or was that that uh, accidental comedic success, like gave you kind of some some confidence to just go and and do that again? I don't know if it's like this for other people, but for me, whenever I'm on a stage, there's usually a bright light right in my eyes that yeah. I look directly into, <laughs> so I'm not looking at the audience. I don't want to make eye contact yeah. with people. I don't know how all these comics do so much crowd work, because I do not want to talk to these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just out there by myself. It's, it's tough, too, because when you're do, if you're doing crowd work and stuff, like you don't know what's going to come yeah. at you, too. It may be nothing, and then you'll have to work back from it being nothing oh, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you have people that end up getting drunk or whatever and screaming out crazy stuff, too, if you give them the option to, to do uh, to say something. Yeah. Um, so what's like your... If you were to write a joke, do you, you? I know you're saying you're kind of working backwards now. Um, do you feel like you sit down and write jokes now, or it's still the same kind of process you get up there and you fuck around and so what happens to me now is i'll come up with a premise first Hmm. and i try to work my way to the punchline so usually it'll happen where i'm having a conversation and someone will say oh that's really funny you should you should Hmm. do that turn that into a bit make that one of your little skits on stage so whatever part of the conversation they gave me that they're like oh you should write that down i'll write it down or if something funny happens to me even if it's traumatic at the time, I'm like, okay, I need to put this in my pocket, write it down right now. Do you pull out like little bits of paper too when you're, I've seen some comedian like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go over this premise. And then, and then you start kind of working it out while you're, you're up there. Like, what does that feel like? What, what, is, when do you know something is, is working? And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why i'm asking that like as a musician especially if i have a new song i'm working Mm -hmm. on i'll go to an open mic and i'll play it and i'll do a similar thing where i have you know the basis of the song but sometimes i'll change it based on the reaction of the crowd um somewhat i mean not not a lot um but enough where okay they really like this part or i'll 
have questions about this like is it a good song is it a bad song and i'll either get a reaction or won't get a reaction and then i'll you know kind of alter my course or whatever from there like how do you know when a bit's working because i've uh, in comedy too there's times where there's they're not necessarily laughs Mm -hmm. but people are paying attention to what you're saying so like i'm I'm sure the setup to the punchline and all that stuff is important so like how do you what what's your your process i guess for like working on that stuff yeah so once i think i have a full joke premise punchline set up all of that i'll go to an open mic tell the joke pay attention to where people are reacting Hmm. because if people only laugh at the premise then it's not a good joke right because i don't have a good punchline it's just a funny concept so i have to change it or like i'll ask other comics like hey how can i tweak this do you record yourself do you do that that kind of thing i used to record every set but i never watch it back so it's not (laughs) useful (laughs) (laughs) sometimes i do that too i'll record my 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 performance and then i'll never look at it again or i'm like oh there's i made a mistake there so i never never want to watch it again i'm too self-conscious about it um but uh so so where if you're you're performing outside of like rochester um you said you're in buffalo when when is that that's two weeks from now the 23rd is it in Buffalo? No, I mean, I should probably oh, yeah, promote my show. For his show. As a matter of fact, I have okay. a show that same day at Buffalo Ironworks. Oh, nice. That's not Something far like from that. where I'm going to be at. Yeah? Do you yeah. know where that is? Um, so we'll be doing a, a performance. Maybe we can crash each other's shows or whatever. What time is what time is your set at again? I think my show starts at 8, so I'm probably going to be 15, 20 minutes in. All right. All right. Um, yeah, it's interesting. All right. Yeah, the radio station there is putting on some some sort of an event or whatever, and I've done an interview there. So it's uh, Buffalo Ironworks, the twenty third, eight p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's ten bucks or something to get in. Tickets, uh, maybe I'll put the link in there. Maybe I don't know. I figured out if you're in Buffalo. <laughs> um, so where where do you see yourself kind of going? Do you see yourself like being just all full time comedy, like doing comedy as a, a full time career um i know even in music and and comedy or whatever you know you have to have the day job sometimes you gotta like you know hustle a little bit outside of the the artistic stuff until it starts paying better um like do you see yourself doing that or or run having a sitcom one day yeah so being on the road as a touring comic is such a it's exhausting like i love it i love telling jokes in new cities but you don't get paid a lot yeah i don't drive so it's like oh, really? hard to get places and i don't know my ultimate thing is i want to i want to do sitcoms i want to write sitcoms yeah it's yeah. so like a writer that that's see i always i was thinking about this we were just out in la what two weeks ago something like that uh in california and and that kind of thing have you ever lived out on the west coast at all no so i feel like there's something to be said for living in a city that's doing a lot of your like what you're doing Mm -hmm. um so like you know nashville it's super saturated but for songwriters it's probably a good place to be because there's a lot of producers down there there's a lot of talent down there so they're going down there to look for for that and there are people wanting to do stuff um so you kind of just network and you get involved with other people same goes for like new york and la for music Mm -hmm. um i feel like the the comedy scene in la at least used to be great as a matter of fact we tried to go to the comedy store too uh we didn't get a chance to go down there i think next time i wanted to go see uh bobby lee perform oh, he's so funny yeah, he's, he's hilarious um but he wasn't performing i think he's performing this this weekend this upcoming weekend or whatever i really wanted to see him because I, I watch his podcast and all that stuff um but uh yeah i agree on the traveling thing you really gotta love the road and driving for hours and hours and hours should i take you driving lessons do you want to learn how to drive kai or you have sure. no, no interest <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta get well. you on the road here get you a bus a tour bus and stuff um so if you're gonna write sitcoms what kind of do you have like ideas for things already like have you written anything uh like ideas i'm not gonna let you let you tell them here uh and have anyone steal it but have you started writing anything like yeah i've started anything? writing yeah yeah all right well i know some film people here in town oh well that's where i was getting to so the west coast right if you're in la there's a lot of tv being done there's comedy out there um 
it would be a great place to kind of be, especially if you're not, you know, you're not not wanting to travel a lot. I mean, LA's a relatively small because of Uber um, mm-hmm. to get around, and there's a lot of people there doing things. Um, I would say, like, maybe take a look at it, spe- except for the fact that it's ridiculously expensive yeah. to live out there. But, I mean, we're all broke anyway, right? So That's true. I'm broke <laughs> at here. At least it's sunny there. <laughs> people just live on the beach, get a couple of tents, you know, yeah. hook it up. Why not, right? Um, but uh, the the TV show thing, I think even here in Rochester, because of RIT, they have the film school here, there's a lot of young uh, filmmakers and things looking to do projects, and they'll do it cheap. Um, have you ever thought about doing like a pilot for something? No, I should look into no? that, though. Well, maybe we'll, we'll talk after this, too. I'll introduce you to some people. Um, but I think film here in Rochester, like, I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, starting a scene for something oh, yeah. as opposed to, like, moving to a place necessarily that has it. Although if you're trying to get into other people's projects, that's probably a better thing to do. Um, do, you, do you see yourself, like, do you have a full hour written at this point? Or I do. Yeah. So my goal for this year is I want to film a comedy special, just kind of self-release it. All right. Well, that can be done. Do you have Do you have an idea of where you'd want to do that? Where I'd want to film Keep it? it a secret. Yeah. 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 Oh, you do. You do know. In, in my head, I do. Yes. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. Do you prefer? So, if you were in a theater, do you feel like a theater would be would be good, or would you, or do you think like a comedy club kind of scene? I prefer the comedy club. Yeah. It feels less pretentious. Huh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So not think... the not the dome in in uh, Las Vegas. Oh, that dome the freaks night. me out. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I feel like if I was playing in there and they had all sorts of stuff going on, I would get all dizzy and nauseous. But um, so what does it take to build like an hour? I mean, that seems like a uh, five minutes is a lot. I've tried to do comedy. I have no. No ability. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like we were saying earlier, it takes a long time to even know if a joke works. Like you have to do it in front of so many different types of crowds. There's jokes that I thought were universally funny, and then I'll tell it in front of certain people, and they just look at me like I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) I did a joke one time, and I think it was about Cardi B or Drake. I don't know. I don't remember which one. And I thought it like Drake. Everyone knows who that is. I thought. Yeah. But people were coming to me afterwards saying, we don't have a clue who that is, and we didn't get the joke. <laughs> it's funny. I, um, do you ever see the show Impractical Jokers? Yeah. You know show? So there was one, uh, Drake, there's like a, pun, you know, they do the punishments at the end of the shows, and it was, who's, it was one of their moms. Yeah, he had to... So he had to guess who she was talking about, and they gave her like a photo of the person. And then she had to like describe him, but she's she she was in her like sixties maybe something like that. Yeah, like, nice beard. He was in. I think she said he's like in a group or something. And then she's like, like the cupcakes. It's kind of like a name, like the, the cupca- cupcakes, like Drake, you know, Drake's, <laughs> Drake's cake. cake yeah. uh, but he got. He ended up getting it surprisingly, and I was surprised that she knew his name too. Out of, um, but uh, yeah, Drake Drake is is pretty universal. So who are these people? Do we have to go introduce them now to Drake? And <laughs> they were they were older give people. Give them a playlist to yeah. listen to. It was that show was actually in Ithaca. No, oh, was it? Yeah. There's a lot of hippies out there that don't listen to. They probably listen to Bob Dylan more than than, yeah. than They Drake. were probably sitting next to me at the Bob Dylan <laughs> concert. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Very apropos that Bob Dylan was playing there too. Yeah. The only thing I don't so Ithaca was weird. It's it's a beautiful town. So like the nat- like the the natural part of it, um, you know the falls, all that kind of stuff. I I dug. It's just so much stuff there is based on the colleges, mm-hmm. um, and so living there like during the summer, it's like a, a ghost town, there. And I, I, growing up in a big city, like I can't I can't do it that quiet. Um, I need some action or some crime or something happening <laughs> some to like, keep me <laughs> keep get the Kia boys down there. Yeah, yeah, we need to get them down there to, to cause some action. Although I think it's changed uh, recently, where it's been a little bit more um, like they've got a Starbucks there now, which they never had. Really. Um, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> she doesn't like them insurance you know um but uh so so an hour set do you have like do you feel like a set has to be a cohesive theme or do you or is it something where it's 
like, like what is your style, I guess, is what I'm kind of trying to get to of comedy. Would it be a, a, a themed thing or would it be a series of jokes? Obviously, they'd have to kind of lead to each other or whatever. But Yeah, I like to, as long as they flow together nicely, I don't think it needs to be a cohesive theme. Hmm. But I do, I am jealous of the comics that are like, they'll come out with a special and all the jokes are about like one specific thing or they're all leading back to this one joke. I think they just make it after the fact looks like it's this. Yeah. Thing. yeah through editing. Mm-hmm. Do you think that, um, uh, using, so I'm going to start getting into your, your preferences on comedy. So, so do you use props? No. Are you, do you have a ventriloquist act in your, <laughs> in your, <laughs> who's that guy with the, the puppet? What's that comedian? Je- oh, Dunham? Jeff Dunham. Jeff oh. Dunham. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah not a big fan of the, it's so funny about him too there was like six of them or something right didn't he have a twin brother we're talking about uh gallagher Gallagher, yeah yeah there was like six of them um and he yeah he used to like license his act out or whatever and he would go that's what you should do if you don't like the road just get a bunch of people get a bunch of yeah get something where you like dress up in an outfit so that no one could tell who you are and then just do your bit or whatever it is and have them you know you just license it out actually do you know the rapper mf doom yeah. He used to do that. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I he, was just thinking about MF Doom when you said your last name, but um so he licenses out his what? His toll. So he had um he had that comedian Hannibal. He had him dressed up as like Doom and had huh. him do like a full concert while he was like somewhere else doing another show. Huh. Hannibal Burris did yeah. that? Yeah. No shit. Mhm. I'm going to have to look that up. Is that online somewhere? You I can... think it is, yeah. So yeah, someone send that to me or something if i forget to to look at it because that that sounds well, i love hannibal burris actually yeah. really people like already it. think i'm named after him of doom so i could <laughs> just like wear start wearing the there mask and wear do the that. mask and then yeah. you, immediately you'll be you'll have name recognition <laughs> huh that's an interesting thing i've thought about you know because you can write songs and give them to other people and i'm i'm getting up there a little bit mm-hmm. in age so i'm like the road i like it i do like it for some reason i, I don't know why but i like just long drives and being exhausted and getting to a new city and, and playing, you know, playing in front of, you know, two people. Um, and I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. But I've, I've thought about, okay, what if I license the songs to a younger performer um, and have them actually do the tour, perform the songs or whatever. Uh, and then obviously I've written them. That's an interesting business model. I didn't know MF Doom did that. What do you, did you, I I think he just did it like as a joke, like to kind of, you know, create this weird, like mysterious supervillain persona. Yeah. So he's playing a show in London, but then he has like Hannibal Burris as him in New York City. So you could put on like a show all at the same time. So everyone's like, oh, I'm at the Doom show in New York. (laughs) And he's like, how? He's playing in London right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Huh. What did you think about? Did you see the Grammys by any chance? I did. Yeah. All right. What? Who, who was your favorite performance at the Grammys? If you had one, did you get to see the premiere ceremony beforehand? No. Oh, okay. I personally think that all the performances before the televised version were much better. I forget who the there was a gospel group that went on first. It was no. Well, it was the Pentatonics, but then there was a gospel. Um, We'll find the name. I'll, I'll post it. But that was the energy of that performance was ridiculous. Um, did you have a favorite favorite moment from from the Grammys at all? Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I liked I liked what he had to say. Um, I think that him saying "Don't stop." Uh, what was his phrase? He said something like that. Like "Don't." Just keep going, something yeah. along those lines. Like that, that messaging, I I really liked. Um, yeah, that part of the speech was definitely overlooked because everyone's just like, "Oh, he's dissing Taylor Swift." Uh, yeah, but it's like, no, I don't, I don't think that was directed though necessarily at Taylor yeah. Swift. I think that was, was it? I don't know. She's just. It, I think she's she's got to go away for a little while. Yeah. I, I feel like she's oversaturating herself in the market. And that's my opinion on it. But um, I liked what what he had to say there. And I think that sometimes to those award shows, and, and I'm part of the Recording Academy and stuff. But like uh, sometimes those award shows get overblown for what their 
what they're saying about music, right? Because mm. the way that those things work, sometimes it is a little bit of like a high school popularity contest type of, kind of thing. People vote for their own people, et cetera, et cetera, even though they're not supposed to necessarily do that. Um, but I think his message just to keep going was awesome. I really like Killer Mike, too. Um, and, and what, you know, he's, he, he got up there and he was like, I'm 48 years old and I can, I can kind of feel like I'm 43 at this point, you know, making music. And he's like, and I, I, you know, stop, don't, don't give up, um, I guess on your, you know, what you're doing. Cause he's been making music for so fucking long. You yeah. Know? It's wild. Cause he's a legend, but all these kids are on TikTok yeah. now. Like who is killer Mike? <laughs> How did he win? It's we don't know funny, who he right? is. Like, like, man, he's been around for so long and for people to not, not know who he was. Um, but I think that it, it's like gotta be the right time for some of that. And sometimes it takes you being overlooked a lot especially certain personality types. Like if I get mm. told you can't do that, that makes me go harder at it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it feels like, I feel like like Killer Mike is, is a similar, just watching him deliver the, like his acceptance speech was like, you know, was, was a strong fuck you to everyone that kind of told me that I, I, I it was never going to get to this point or whatever um and then he got three of them um i don't know what happened afterwards i didn't look too much after but he, got, he like got into a fight or something <laughs> with like one of this again but the security i'll tell you what at that at the staples center that those security guys guys are too aggressive i have a, a story that maybe i'll tell you afterwards about about some security stuff that happened one year um there, but I liked I liked those two in particular. Did you see Joni Mitchell? Are you a I fan did. of Joni Mitchell? I, yeah, that was inspiring. Yeah, she. Um, I was here. I was sitting there with my mom, uh, and and Allie was there too. But I, I kind of felt um, she had she's gone through so much, um, and I think again her songwriting and what have you. It, it felt like in the past there was less music. <laughs> in the Grammys and this yeah. year in particular there seemed to be more more like yeah music um done and, and again during the televised version eh, some of that's not not I'm not into the I, I don't even know half the people honestly that are on the televised I liked in the in the the uh, premiere ceremony I think I knew more more artists that were performing there what did you like about Jay-Z's um speech there in particular I mean was that like inspiring to you his his words about it or it was and what i see a lot of these musicians go through i feel like i could relate to that even though i'm not a songwriter i'm not a musician i still feel that you know like talk about with killer mike all these kids are think he's just like this old man that just came out of nowhere yeah. when i've been seeing him my whole life and i feel like that's how it's going to be when i finally pop off you know it's going to be like people are going to be like oh this girl's like in her late thirties or forties or however old I'll be. Right. And it's like, Oh, she just came out of nowhere at the age of 40. It's like, <laughs> right. no, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I've been grinding late night in random bars. Yeah. Performing for three people to get to where I am. Yeah. It's, it's the arts is such a tough thing too. Cause by the time you have, there, there's some people that you know have a whole team around them that gets them early success and they're younger um but i think really the majority of of the musicians i really like um have had to wait a while mm -hmm. and, it, and it forces their craft to be better um you know as yeah. as they they get older just because they're they're at some point you kind of say i don't give a shit about the awards i don't give a shit about anything else i want to make the art that I want to make. Um, and that's, it. it's funny cause that's when the accolades kind of start coming, you know, exactly. when you're like, I don't, the, I'm, I'm done with it. Um, I, I really, I like killer Mike was, was, is one of my favorite rappers. Um, Jay Z too. Um, although I don't know, is he put out, I don't, I don't even know if he's put out an album lately. Right. I mean, he, I haven't heard any, I, I mean, I'm old school hip hop too. So I like that. But, um, so when you pop off, what's going to be your speech, Kai? <laughs> <laughs> when you're, you know, you can win a Grammy for comedy. Did you know that yeah, you could do that? Yeah, if I do a comedy yeah, album. Yeah, you do some yeah. spoken word. I've thought about that. I want to do a comedy album. Would you make that, that special into a comedy album too, you think? 
for sure but i don't know how to go about doing that and it's with comedians like i don't have a manager so anything i do i have to figure it out myself right so when i first started realizing i'm good at this it was like okay now how do i get on shows so you have to you have to be so annoying you have to message people every day like hey how are you getting on all these shows yeah fine like bookers can you book me can you put me on the show can i do a five minute spot okay so so with music right typically they'll ask mm-hmm. okay do you have um you know a website or somewhere we can go see your music or do you have like live video of you performing mm-hmm. is it similar with comedy they ask you for like a it is yeah so if you submit to any festival or if you do any show they'll say do you have a 10 minute tape hmm. and that's the hardest part yeah because they want to see you do consistent 10 minutes on stage not just like a highlight reel right right um so how what did you get that from did you take it from just a bunch of like like from an open mic that you did or did you actually do it purposefully to make the performance kind of real or whatever so i started when i would go to a show i would like say okay this is going to be the show where i film my tape so i'd have either I'd bring like a tripod, like have lights and stuff set up, or I'd have a friend record me. Like we're talking about Chris Cardwell, like he's a photographer. Yeah. So a a lot of photographer, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of having him as a friend is perfect. Just like, Hey, can you record that? You (laughs) already have your nice camera with you. Can you record this? So I'd make sure I'm like dressed up because unfortunately as a woman, that's part of it. And then that becomes part of how they judge you. Like, I know it's true in music, but there's this added layer where if, and I don't want to like brag or anything, but if you're pretty, they're going to be like, oh, you don't need to like do comedy. You're pretty. <laughs> yeah. Like with Matt Rife, we talk more about the way he looks than Yeah, his. well, it, that that one's funny too, because he gets a lot of flack kind of for mm-hmm. for just being you know who he is or yeah. you know how he looks he can't help that right uh, except for the fact being ripped he could eat more donuts <laughs> matt rife okay mm-hmm. there's donuts are delicious um but <laughs> but, I, but i think that like it's it's hard because i think i've had this conversation actually with ali too like sometimes it's hard to be i think a comedian if mm-hmm. if you're good looking yeah because you almost have to look funny like there are comedians that can get away. Like I think that's part of Bobby Lee's thing. Yeah, and he sa- he says this too. He's like, I know how I look. I know I look like a little guy. Like, is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that helps him a little bit. Where he'll oh, say yeah. things, and he doesn't. He, he I see him getting annoyed sometimes too, because he'll say something that doesn't. He doesn't mean to be funny, or maybe he is. Maybe it's all an act or whatever mm-hmm. he's putting on. But he's like, it doesn't mean. He doesn't mean it to be funny. But the way it comes out and it looks from him makes it funny um so i feel like matt rife and 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 being good looking and i'm gonna put you in that category too Kai. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> i think it's almost more of an uphill battle to do it because you got to overcome is. people's assumptions that you know oh well that they, they they're getting by on their looks or something yeah right and it's like you'll see a lot of male comedians wear hoodies and like new balances on stage. You would like almost be frumpy. They yeah. just have jokes about having little dicks and all this yeah. when it's like, I've seen some of them and they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think I've actually seen, who is it? One of the, one of those like Burt Kreischer, not Burt Kreischer. Oh, who's the other guy? Um, kind of looks like him sort of. him and his Tom wife. Segura? Tom yeah. Segura. I, I saw him, he was talking about buying a jacket or something that he was planning to wear on stage. And then he's like, he's looking at himself in the mirror. He's like, no, I look, I look too cool. Like yeah. I can't wear this on stage because I look too put together. I've got mm. to kind of look a little, like I'm falling apart, yeah. which is such a weird intentional thing to do because the opposite is true i think almost for music like you got to mm-hmm. try and be cooler than exactly. you are yeah um so what do you do what do you how do you dress do you typically go like full gown and crown <laughs> it or took a while you? to find the balance <laughs> because so my mom is the one that's from georgetown south carolina and she's okay. like a typical southern belle black woman where it's like anytime you leave the house you need to be dressed up yeah she would have a heart attack if she saw that i'm like being recorded <laughs> right now with no makeup on yeah. you don't have any ma- get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm jealous. i've got makeup on <laughs> this is the best i could do even with makeup look at this 
Okay, get a close up here. Let's get a close. Up. <laughs> She'd be like, "You have um, the nerve to be co- bald headed yeah. and no makeup." <laughs> like, you look great, but, Kai. Thank but, you. But um, so, so is it like? Do you feel like you get a better reaction when you're dressed up a little bit so on I, stage? Or I started off like I would always wear dresses and heels mm. and full face of makeup, and I noticed that not necessarily that people didn't take me seriously but people want you as a comedian to like be humble like Hmm. lower yourself yeah so if you look good and you know you look good then that kind of takes away from it Hmm. so i have a friend who's a comic who he's a handsome man and he'll tell jokes about like oh i'm so handsome and i'm fucking all these girls and this this and this and no one likes it (laughs) it just looks like he's up there bragging yeah yeah So, like, you always, if you are attractive or anything good you say about yourself, you have to balance it out. Right. So, if you're hot, you have to be like, yeah, I'm hot, but I'm I'm a slut. Or, yeah, I'm hot, but I'm dumb. So, I have to, like, take yourself down a few pegs. So, the most I'll do is, like, jeans and, like, a nice top. I'm not going to, like, wear heels and dresses and stuff. I can see that. I can see that being the case, too. Especially if you're, if you're trying to get people on your side right away. I feel like sometimes people immediately judge people anyway on the, the way they look. Yeah. Um, and so that can be a, a thing. Do you, do you pretend to have, there's some comedians I've noticed pretend to be nervous on stage. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Well, not pretend, but that's part of their like act. Do you do any, you do put any of that in there. You don't have to tell all your trade secrets, Kai, but <laughs> if you do that, but I feel like you kind of naturally develop a stage persona. Hmm. So most of what I say on stage is true. Like it'll be like, things are told in comedy time like i'll say oh this morning when it was really three years ago yeah. but other than that like it's all true but i still feel like when i started off in the scene when i was like in my 20s because this is where i was in life well, i had the, started in rochester yes or, okay. yep so i feel like i had the stage persona of being like the slutty girl like <laughs> oh i'm fucking all these guys and blah 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 like that's where my jokes were coming from and i kind of had like I naturally was like really giggly on stage and kind of flirty because that's what my jokes were. So that's kind of the like stance that I kind of took on. But now that I'm older and just (laughs) more jaded in relationships in general and more just like not leave me alone, I'm staying at home and reading a book. (laughs) So now now I'm like a lot grumpier. I'm like, Mm. I think I come across like I don't giggle as much on stage. I'm not. Yeah. I don't have that flirty persona. So you're kind of like the jaded, uh, jaded relationship. Like, uh, I'm, I'm over that kind of stuff. Like, or I'm, I can see that, that working too. Like, what does that, do you feel like you then, so I'll give an example in music, um, of becoming a distilled, a more distilled character of your self so like steven tyler from aerosmith the lead singer right if you look at him when they first started out like the 70s and the way he looked he kind of looked like modern day steven tyler a little bit but it was very like it was a tamed almost tamed version of how he dresses and stuff now and now you look at him and he looks like you know uh, a middle-aged woman uh, like your aunt you know and he's got like scarves and all this this stuff it's like very much a just like a distilled intensified version of what steven tyler looks like and i almost feel like he's he's now blurred the line between his stage persona Mm -hmm. and his offstage persona do you feel like because you've been doing this for a while now for six years and in comedy time i know that's not a huge amount of time either right for to be doing comedy but um do you feel like some of that then bleeds into your like your personal life a little bit or your personality off the stage if it has i haven't noticed that but i think it bleeds into how people interact with me Hmm. so i think with comedians like people form parasocial relationships with anyone they see on stage but i think it it's expedited in comedy time hmm. because if you're making someone laugh you're up there it's not like i don't have like a band behind me i'm just like one on one talking to these people yeah. in their mind so it's like we're best friends and they hmm. think they know me so have you had any weird experiences cuz of that like where you're they feel like you're 
you're having a conversation with, because you always have people come up after mm -hmm. a set or whatever. I, I have the same yeah. thing. They come up and, uh, you know, either they're excited or they, they just feel like, oh, you, you spoke to me specifically or whatever. Yeah. Um, have you had a weird experience you can speak to at all? I've had a few. <laughs> <laughs> what was, so, what was like a weird, the, one of the weirder ones? So um, I have a joke about having an abortion. And so, well, a couple jokes about it. And, and someone came up to me and just started just like talking to me about asking me all these invasive questions. Huh. And so I told them, that's not any of your business. Right. This is my personal life. I don't know you. I don't even know your name. You're just asking <laughs> me all these really invasive questions. Yeah. And then he's like, you don't have a right to say that. You were just talking about it in front of a whole crowd of people. Huh. I was like, was I talking about it or right. did I just tell a joke? Yeah, that you were performing it? in front yeah. of people. And yeah, that's interesting. Any other any other crazy stuff? Uh, happen like yeah. while you're yeah so, let's, let's hear about some of this crazy <laughs> crazy stuff and and just a word to the warning don't do this at comedy shows you know <laughs> don't go up to the comedian afterwards and start talking crazy shit or at music shows and don't don't come thinking that the the lead singer or the bass player is in love with you or wrote a song about you if they've never met you um just just putting that out there you know um john lennon and you know you know you know um but so like what's what's another do you have a, a funny a funny one perhaps well, there was this guy actually who had a crush on me. He followed, like, went to all my shows, followed me on social media. And so I posted in my story, like, oh, I'm going to be at this event. He, like, likes, cause, you know, when you, like, like a message on your Instagram story, yeah. it goes to, like, a private conversation. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, what time is the show again? Like, replying to the story. And I'm like, oh, it's mm -hmm. at three or whatever. So he shows up afterwards i just leave like i don't talk to anybody and just like yeah. make a beeline <laughs> like let's get out of here oh, yeah, i'm yeah. tired <laughs> and so afterwards he messaged me and he's like you invited me to this show and you didn't even say hi to me i came there for you and you didn't talk to me they're wow. like okay you came there for me but i'm there to do a job yeah, yeah. like i'm supposed to entertain the audience you were part of that audience i was not directly talking to you that can be, that can be tough too as a performer, and I'll, I'll kind of speak from experience too on some of that. Um, so, like as a performer, if you have people that come, I guess regularly to your shows, or you have people come and see you, a lot of times you're you know you're appreciative of, of them coming to support you and come out and see you, and that they like your material, your art, or whatever you're doing. And so you'll be you know very friendly, and, and a lot of times you do want to spend like at least me. After a show, I want to spend more time than I have the time to do yeah. um, with the people that have come out, especially if I've had a personal interaction with you of some sort, or you've been to shows before, you specifically reach out to me, hey, I'm going to come to this, I can't wait, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I feel like, I always feel um, bad if, because I, sometimes I'll feel like I'm being pulled in multiple directions, mm -hmm. right? So I'm saying hi to a person or I'm, I'm like, oh, thanks for coming, blah, blah, and someone else will start talking to me and I've got to interact also with them. Yeah. Um, and I feel like people can kind of get offended uh, a little bit by, by you not spending enough time um, hanging out with them at a show. But it's, it is, it is, you're there for work. And, and even with the ba band, it, it can get a little worse because you got to break down stuff oh, yeah. uh, and all that kind of thing and bring equipment out. You can't just leave it on stage, especially if maybe there's a band after you um, or you've got like sound people wanting to go home. Yeah. So you need to get all that stuff off the stage or whatever. And you're trying to make, you know, make a talk, you know, talk with all your, your people that came out. Um, that can be challenging. Do you find like, um, do you find the same thing after a comedy show? Like, do you feel like you want to say thank you to everyone that, that came? And, um, cause I can imagine it being tough, especially in the situation where, you know, you're saying you try not to make too much eye contact, mm -hmm. but if you're making direct eye contact and it is someone, you know, um, they can almost think like, Oh, I'm going to come after and we're just going to hang out all the rest of the yeah. night. Um, like what, how do you feel about those, those scenarios? So I have a lot of times where I'll have close friends of mine, who try to, who are like, oh yeah, I'll come to your show. And they're thinking that we're just gonna hang out all night. Yeah. So there's usually like a green room area for the comics, so I'll just be like back there. And my friends are like, well, why aren't you sitting with me? Why, why aren't we talking and hanging out? Or they'll try to have a conversation with me. And I'm like, I need to write my set at the last minute because yeah, I don't yeah. know what I'm gonna say up there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't talk to you right yeah. now. Do, do, do you have like a pre-show routine? 
that you do? Like, because I know I know a lot of performers. Like, I, I'm the same way. Before a show, I, I kind of want to, like, save my energy for what I'm about yeah. to do. I've got to, like, get in the right frame of mind. I've got to remember the material. I've got to, like, rehearse what I'm going to be doing, you know, beforehand. And if I get to conversations, it really distracts me mm -hmm. from what I'm doing. Um, do you have, like, a, some people, you know, take a shot of, uh, I don't know, something before they're set? Do you have something that you do? I used to take a shot of whiskey before every set, but yeah. now I don't do that so much. I usually just am off in the corner by myself watching everyone else because mm. I usually don't go first. So I want to know, even if, like, I don't know, even if I am going first, they're still the host. So I want to know how the crowd is reacting to everything. Mm. So I want to be in the crowd listening. Like, what are they saying about the host? What mm. are they saying about the show? Are people there because they know someone or are they there because they just have nothing else to do and they've never been to a comedy show? Right, right. I want to know like what the vibe is. So I'm just sitting there studying everyone. Hmm. Do you think, do you think that, um, I, we're getting a five minute warning. Um, do you think that, so sometimes if, I, if we're an opening set or we're an opening band for another band, there are people kind of walking in as mm -hmm. we're, you know, as we're, we're setting up or as we're performing. Um, and I don't call them out unless they're making a distraction for the, for everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, I won't say like, you know, someone's walking in or whatever. Um, do you interact with the crowd like that for your comedy sets? Like if someone's coming in, uh, or making a distraction, do you, do you attack, uh, not attack them? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a, like a heckler, you know what I mean? Like you have to kind of address the elephant in the room, so oh, to speak, yeah. right? Um, do you feel like um, like you you have a good grasp on that side of the comedy? Like you know, I think I do. I don't get a lot of hecklers, but I I think I'm good at steering the ship. So a lot of people get so just thrown off game because they have their set list in their head, which is why I need to assess the room and feel the vibes because yeah. I usually can tell like if there's going to be hecklers or if there's going to because they don't wait till I get up there they heckle everybody <laughs> right. especially if they get like the wrong reaction from someone they're like oh I'm part of this too I'm funny too so I'm just gonna quip whenever anyone's up there right. I don't like that I don't like crowd work so I shut it down <laughs> immediately I do it in a funny way and I try not to be mean but I yeah. let you know this is what we're not going to do do you do you look at them and find some piece of clothing or something about them that you can easily make fun of if they start heckling you? Sometimes, and to not be honest, yeah, kinda, I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> I assess them too. I judge them before, ahead of time so I can find something to, oh, yeah. to be like you. Shut up now. No, I tend to I tend to not do that. Cause I think music is a little bit different because it's hard to talk over a rock band yeah. that's at like full volume. <laughs> um, like you know, maybe in between sets, someone could say something, but you just start the next song and they got to shut up, uh, or they can keep talking and no one, you know, no one hears them anyway. Um, so let's let's do this because I know we got what do we got a couple of minutes, two minutes or something. Let's shout out again where people can find your stuff and we'll put links to whatever you want me to put links to um, and then your show in Buffalo so it's going to be the same day as our show out in Buffalo but go to Kai's uh, show and then maybe we'll still be performing afterwards and then come to ours and get stinking drunk at our show uh, and then drag Kai there too yeah I'll, I'll be there <laughs> ours is it before no but I think it might we might be last and I don't remember there's four bands so um, yeah, I'm only 10 minutes, so I know I'm not going to be the last comic. So oh, well, you probably, can come. We'll yeah, get you in free through. for the show if you want. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so why don't you give them, give the people at home here where they can find you again one more time. Okay, so it's Kai Von Doom Comedy on Facebook and uh, at Kai underscore Von Doom 77 on Instagram. And you could see me at Babeville in Buffalo, New York, February 23rd. The show is at 8 p.m., I believe. Ba Bayville is that just a comedy club? I don't remember. I don't, um, I don't remember if I asked that before. I think it is. No, I think they do music too. They oh, do they do. Too. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe we could do a, a little co-set. We're talking about that. Um, comment in the in the comments too. If you if you've ever been to a show where a comedian opens for a band, do you guys like that or do you not like that? Would you prefer to see one or the other? Because um, I know a lot of comedians, and I've always I've always liked having either like a comedian or a poet open a show just because i feel like it it gets the audience kind of focused 
a, a poet bit. would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've had I've had a couple of poets now. I have a, a friend of mine, this guy Murray, that I want to have open at some point too. Uh, Murray Thomas, by the way, if anyone's looking, he's got a few <laughs> a few books out. He helped helped uh, rep us on some. Uh, uh, podcast. He had my T-shirt on, like one of the band shirts there. Um, but uh, Kai, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thanks so much um, for having me. Maybe before I don't know if I'll be able to get over there though. Before that might be very challenging because I'm bringing a lot of equipment and stuff. But I'd love to see a set of yours. So if that doesn't work, you said, do you have another show lined up at the moment? I do. I have to look at my calendar. All right. Though. So maybe just let me know what that is because I want. I do want to come see you. And scream and hoot and holler and, and whatever <laughs> and laugh. So I know Allie's seen you and she really liked your 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 material. So, so what's that? Oh, you haven't you haven't been yet. Oh, I think you said you wanted to go to where was it? You were doing were you doing a show at Boulder or something at one point? No, yeah. yeah. But go go follow Kai. See where she's performing next. I'll put links to your stuff, to Kai's stuff in the uh, description there. Thank you, everyone, too, who watches and listens to the show. Um, I think we're a few episodes behind on the uh, the audio thing, but I've got to get those uploaded. Um, but you can watch them all on YouTube because I prefer you to see and hear us. Uh, and again, thank you to Seed and Stone uh, Cider. This is, I know I promised talking about it, I didn't talk about it yet. This is a combination mead and cider called Do You Like Jazz? seven percent alcohol um i got some of this because i don't personally i'm not a beer fan mm-hmm. um but it surprised me because i tasted it at the open mic a couple of weeks ago there um and i thought it was a beer they had oh. on tap by accident um i was like oh that's that tastes exactly like beer but it's just mead which is like a uh uh, honey wine mixed with a cider and it's delicious so if you like beer the do you like jazz that they have on now i don't know if they'll continue to have it but it might be a, a limited time thing we just happen to have some here six thousand dollars i'll sell you this uh little can for if you're, <laughs> if you're interested. no i don't think i'm allowed to actually sell it but um but i'll give you a little taste of it if you come by if there's any left after this uh, but thank you to seed and stone for sponsoring the show again please share the show like it we've got merch so go buy the merch uh which really helps us and we've got a patron page you have one of those a patreon or anything like that no, um yeah you definitely should get we'll get you paid out here we gotta get you yeah. monetized yeah. fully um and uh thank you everyone for for uh you know watching us we're on episode 22 we're almost at a quarter of a hundred so uh that's something that's something Kai. i don't know what it is but it's something ali thank you as always um Kai, I'm going to give you the left hand just because I can't reach across there. Um, We'll do this weird (laughs) handshake. Thank you for coming on the show, Kai. (laughs) Super awkward handshake. Thank you for coming on the show. And we're going to come see you uh, perform at some point, if not next week, your next show. Uh, And we'll see you guys all in the next episode. Bye. Later.